Thank you, everyone, for joining so far. And give uh, just going to give everyone else a minute or two uh, to join the session, and and then we'll kick off. So we'll just wait sixty seconds, and then we'll get started. Oh, hi, Ben. Hello, Siva. All right, let's, um, let's get into it so that uh, we don't lose too much time. So thank you for joining today's uh, live coding workshop on Step Up Authentication. Uh, I'm Dan Baker. I'm a lead solution engineer uh, for Auth0 in the APAC region. Uh, so what are we going to go through today? Uh, for anyone who's not aware of what step up authentication is, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start by explaining just what that is. Um, that's going to take a couple of minutes. We'll then jump straight into the live coding session and you're free to follow along during that live coding session. Now, if you do want to follow along in the live coding session, I suggest you go to auth0.com uh, right now and just sign up for a free account. Um, and that'll, that'll kind of get you started in terms of the live coding. And then uh, if we have time at the end, we'll do some Q and A uh, and I'll also be on the booth. So Auth0 does have a booth here. And uh, if you do have questions at the end and we do run out of time then feel free to drop by the Auth0 booth and uh, we can continue the discussion. So what is step up authentication? Um, essentially, if you want to log in to a service or a service wants to allow you to log in, they want to allow you a, a frictionless user experience. They don't want you to have to perform MFA uh, when you authenticate, but there are certain privileged or sensitive actions that you can take within that service. And they do want a higher level of trust when you perform those actions. Um, then what step up authentication is, is it, it prompts you for a second set or a different set of credentials uh, when you're trying to perform, um, or when you're trying to access that sensitive resource. So for example, I might log in with my username and password and it'll take me straight into this, you know, whatever the service is. Uh, but then when I want to, you know, do something a little bit more sensitive, I'm prompted to uh, type in a one-time code that's sent to my phone. So that's that's an, a basic example of what step up authentication is. And if we think about why it's becoming more common these days, um, if, if we think back maybe five years ago, um, in order to provide multi-factor authentication, um, essentially every service that had MFA on it would just prompt you for that MFA step on every authentication. So essentially you log in and you're prompted for MFA. And that's got quite a big impact on the user experience and it can have quite a big impact on the uptake of the service. So then, you know, if you, if you wanna make that experience a little bit better, um, you can choose to only trigger multi-factor authentication if there's some risk so it's still happening on the authentication, but you know, if someone's logging in from the same device at the same time that they normally log in from the same location, maybe we don't have to trigger MFA, but if there's something that doesn't quite line up with their normal usage pattern, then we would trigger MFA. And that's a better approach. Um, and then an even, you know, an even better user experience and one that's even more frictionless is something like continuous authentication with step up. And that's where the authentication service is uh, continually evaluating what's going on with that user. You know, are they changing device? Are they changing IP address? Are they trying to access something sensitive? And when they are, we step them up. So we don't do the MFA step on authentication, but we do it, you know, when something changes. So with that in mind, um, let's jump into the live coding session. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to start by creating an Auth0 tenant. And as I said before, if anyone wants to uh, 
if anyone wants to follow along, I suggest you go to authzero.com uh, right now and sign up. Um, and I will point out that for today, uh, you do need, uh, well, actually you don't need, we will be doing it in JavaScript. Um, it's going to be very basic JavaScript. So um, as long as you've done some development before, um, you'll, you'll actually be able to follow along very easily. Um, we're going to configure an application to use Auth0 for authentication, and we're going to be using OpenID Connect. We're going to add a scope-based authorization model to our application, and I'll explain a little bit more about what that is uh, when we get there. We're going to turn on MFA, and then we're going to enhance our MFA implementation, and we're going to turn it into step-up authentication. So with that in mind, uh, let's... Uh, Okay, and I can see a chat for the website link and someone's already answered, which is excellent. All right, so let's uh, let's get into it. So I'm gonna head over to the Auth0 dashboard. Now I'm already logged in, um, but what I am gonna do so that we're starting from scratch is I am going to create a new Auth0 tenant. So tenant is like an account within Auth0 uh, and I'm gonna create a new one. We're running on the Auth0 public cloud. Uh, so I can choose to host in either Australia, Europe, or the US, and uh, I'm going to select Australia for this one. Uh, and uh, let's go and create that tenant. Let's just wait a little bit longer while that loads. Here we go. Okay, and if we actually have, uh, if we go back to our slides, step one, done. So. If everything was that quick, we'd, we'd be over in uh, in five minutes. But it's not quite going to be that quick. Uh, so the second thing that we need to do is we want to create an application within Auth0. So let's click on Applications, and let's click on Create an Application. Now, we can give our application a name, and I'm going to call it My Website. Um, and then we select the type of application that we want to build. So uh, Auth0 breaks these down into four different categories. We have native applications, single page web apps, regular web apps, or machine to machine apps. Uh, and for today's workshop, I'm going to use uh, regular web applications. So I'm gonna click on create. And, uh, and as I said before as well, we are going to be using a bit of JavaScript today. And so to that end, uh, I'm going to select the Node.js uh, technology stack. Now, Auth0 does provide uh, 60 to 65 different quick starts and SDKs. Um, so we generally have you covered uh, no matter what tech stack you're using. Um, but uh, as I said for today, let's just select Node.js. And once we've got down into the actual uh, framework or technology stack we want to use, uh, then Auth0 is going to give us a very detailed step-by-step -step instructions on what we need to do to get our application up and running uh, within an existing application, or it gives us a uh, it gives us a sample here that's fully configured. Um, and in fact, I'm going to use the sample application uh, for today's workshop. So I'm just going to click on download sample and download and I'll click that. And okay, we are good to go. Now there's a couple of another, there's a couple of other steps we have to follow here. We have to set the allowed callback URL and we also have to set the allowed logout URL. So one thing, uh, let me just copy that. Now, one thing that I'm gonna do, um, which is a little bit different from the instructions here is uh, in the instructions, it says you should uh, set the, the allowed callback URLs to be on localhost. Now, Auth0 treats localhost a, a little bit special, and uh, it, it just changes the behavior a little bit. I don't actually want to use, I do want to run this on my machine today, but I actually don't want to use the localhost domain. So what I've done is if I go to, uh, if I go to my, oops, it's just here. So uh, if I go into my slash etc slash hosts file, uh, what I've actually done is I have added an alias for localhost to my website. Uh, and what that means is I'm actually able to go to you know, HTTP my website, and that's the same as going to localhost. Now, if you're following along um, and uh, 
this is getting a bit complicated, that's fine. Um, you're free to use localhost. You'll see that there, there's one or two differences that, that appear in the UI, but apart from that, there's gonna be no difference. So if you do wanna just use localhost, just go ahead and do that. But, uh, but I'm gonna use my website instead of localhost. So let's, uh, let's actually set up these callback URLs and this logout URL. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this link here. Uh, and that's going to take me to the page where I can set up these URLs in my application. So maybe why do I have to set up these URLs? So the allowed callback URL and the allowed logout URL, uh, these are required as part of the OpenID uh, and in fact the OAuth 2.0 specifications. Uh, so these, these are both just required to be set and that's a security mechanism within the protocol. So I'm going to say my website is the allowed logout URL. My website is the allowed callback URL. So that'll do. I'm going to scroll down and save that. Uh, and that should be all the configuration we need to do in Auth0 to get up and running. So if I jump back over to my terminal here, let's actually open up, um, let's actually open up the sample application that I downloaded. So open this up in VS Code. And here is my sample application. Uh, and if we follow the instructions, we do need to do an NPM install. So I've actually closed the instructions, but it did say to do an NPM install. It did say to do an NPM start. So let's do an, an install and a start. And now let's actually see if that is working on my local machine. So go to my website 3000 and we're up. Uh, and I can see a question here. Uh, will NGROC work? Yes, it will. Um, uh, I, I you may not be able to get it up and running um, to follow along with this workshop because it may take a bit of time, but you can certainly use NGROC for this as well. So um, my website 3000, I'm going to click on login and oops, something's gone wrong. So something's not quite right here. It says the redirect URI is not on the allowed list of callback URLs. And if we click for additional information, it says here that uh, we passed in uh, a callback URL of localhost 3000 slash callback, but that's not actually allowed. Um, and so this has happened because uh, I'm obviously using my website, uh, but my application still thinks I'm using localhost. Um, so let's just go into our application and fix that. Uh, so before I actually fix that, what I will do is I'm just going to give you um, a little bit of an overview of this application, and that's just going to make it uh, a little bit easier um, for everyone to understand what's going on as I as I build out this application with Step Up Authentication. So this is a, an Express JS application, um, and we're including the Express library here. Um, we're using a an npm package called Passport. Uh, in order to supply the authentication. And specifically, we're using a, a particular a, a passport authentication strategy um, coming out of the Auth0, the Passport Auth0 library. And we can actually see the configuration of our strategy here. Um, so because I downloaded the sample app, I've got my domain, my client ID, and my client secret. These are all already set which is very nice. I don't have to set those myself. And the callback URL is either going to be the auth0, uh, is either going to come out of an environment variable here, uh, or it's going to default to our local host 3000 callback. And this is actually the problem here. Um, the problem is that I, I don't have an auth0 callback URL set in my environment variable. And so it's just defaulting to local host, but I actually want it to be my website instead of local host. Uh, so in order to set that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go into the .env file and paste that in there. And in fact, let me just also copy the environment variable that's being used, come back into this .env file and do that. So I'm saying my callback URL uh, should be my website 3000 slash callback. So that should fix our callback issue. Now, before I go and test that, um, just to continue a little bit further on, this application, um, hopefully people here are familiar with the, the concept of an MVC application or a model view controller app. This application is exactly that. Um, 
So we can see our in our application here, we're actually loading a set of routers um, to on, onto the index path. And so these are our controllers. And if we go into slash routes, and let's have a look at one of them, we'll go into users. We can see that if we go to the slash user endpoint, uh, then it's going to run this middleware called secured. And we'll have a look at that a little bit later. Uh, but then it's going to run uh, this controller function. So we're given the request, the response, um, and a next function. And uh, basically, th this is the controller. So in the MVC framework, we've got our controller. We're rendering a view called user. And we're passing in this ob JavaScript object as the model. So our model contains two keys, user profile and title, um, and we're passing that into the user view. Now, if we just have a very quick look at that user view, um, we can see it here. So we've got a user.pug, and uh, we're essentially just pulling some attributes here out of our model, um, and we're pasting in uh, the user's profile information as well. So MVC style of application, uh, and it's it's actually very simple. So we've uh, we've fixed well, we've hopefully fixed our callback URL. So let's actually restart our application, and let's refresh this page. And I'll click on login again, and now we can see that I have successfully uh, logged. Uh, sorry, I've successfully loaded the Auth0 login page. Um, and this page is fully configurable. We, you know, as within the Auth0 dashboard, we're not going to go into it today. But um, if you want to, you can fully rip and replace the HTML that's displayed on this page. Um, you know, you don't you don't have to have the page looking like this if you don't want it to. Um, and I will just point out uh, because I did forget to mention before: if you do have any questions, just please leave them uh, in the chat, and I'll be checking the chat uh, every so often uh, to answer any questions that are left in there. Uh, and do make sure that when you are typing in questions in that chat, uh, you need to be typing them into the workshop roundtable chat and not the event chat, because I'm, I'm not uh, monitoring the, the chat on the whole event. It's just the workshop roundtable. Now, as this is a brand new Auth0 tenant, I don't have a user to log in with yet. So I'm actually just going to sign up with a new user, and I'll just use this email address here. And uh, let's click on sign up. All right, and uh, now we've actually successfully logged in. So it looks like our sample is all working. Um, and we can see here the profile information that is coming back from Auth0. Now, we're using OpenID Connect. Um, this application is using you know, the Auth0 Passport um, uh, library. And under the covers, that's using OpenID Connect uh, for the authentication. And as part of the, uh, as part of that protocol, as part of OpenID Connect, your application ends up with two types of tokens. It has an access token and it has an ID token. Now, typically, the access token is used to to pass around to other to other services in order to you know access resources. And the ID token uh, contains information about the user who's logged in. Uh, what we're looking at here is is essentially the ID token. This is all the information that is displayed in the ID token. And what I want to do, um, just so that you know we have a better idea of what's going on, I'd actually like to display on this page everything that Auth0 is returning. So I don't just want to see the ID token, um, just so that you know we, we can see a bit more of what's going on under the covers. I actually want to just see everything that Auth0 is returning here. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back into my controller, my user's controller. And if we have a look at how this is working, um, what this controller is doing is uh, it's pulling out the user profile uh, from this request.user. So our user is, uh, is basically being injected into the request object. We're pulling out the user profile. We're actually pulling out everything that's in that user. Uh, and then we're stringifying it and sending it down uh, in our model to our view. So what I want to do is I actually want to enhance this user object to contain all the other stuff that Auth0 returns uh, so that I don't, I don't have to change this too much. So to do that, I'm going to head back over to app.js. And I'm going to head back to our Auth0 strategy. 
And one of the things contained within our auth series strategy is this function. And what this function does is it essentially maps all of the stuff that auth zero is returning to our application into a user object. And if we have a look at what the default implementation is doing here, uh, it's essentially taking the user's profile and just saying, right, the user profile, that's, that is the, uh, that's the user object. And what I want to do is I want to pull in the access token and some of these extra params as well. Uh, and I want to add them to the user object just so I can see what's going on uh, a little bit more easily. So what I'm going to do is actually just add them in here. Extra params and profile and save that. And so now my user object will actually contain the access token, the extra metadata that Altura returns along with the profile information. And that should do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my application again, and I'm going to refresh this page. And what we'll see now is I have my access token, uh, which is at the moment an opaque token. I have my extra params. Um, so, and in particular, the one to look at here is the list of scopes. So these are the list, uh, so scopes, um, this is again part of the OpenID Connect or the OAuth2 protocol. Um, and in fact, the three scopes that we're requesting, these are all default uh, or built-in scopes to the OpenID Connect standard. Um, and uh, we're gonna be looking at this in a little bit more detail uh, pretty soon. Uh, and then, you know, I've still got my user profile here as well. So, so far, so good. Now, the next thing I want to do is, and if I jump back to my slides here, um, we've configured, we've got our application configured and it's using Auth0 for authentication. The next thing I want to do is add a scope-based authorization model to my application. Now, what do I mean by that? What I want to do is I want to be able to have multiple pages within my applications. Right now I'm sitting on the profile page. We've got a home page. I'm also going to add a billing page. So I want to have all these different pages and I want to be able to protect uh, each page with a scope. And what I mean by that is if I'm on this profile page, if I'm on the user profile page, I want Auth0 to issue an access token to me, um, which contains the user profile scope. And if I go to a billing page, I want Auth0 to issue me an access token uh, with a, a scope that contains the user billing, well, with a, a list of scopes. And one of those scopes is gonna be the user billing scope. And the reason why I wanna do that is by ensuring that I have a, uh, a particular scope for a particular page, it actually allows Auth0 to inject uh, authorization policies uh, while it's issuing these access tokens. And we can kind of decide, right, well, this user should be allowed to access this page, but not this page. Um, or what we're actually gonna do in this, in, uh, in this session is we're gonna say, you have to uh, complete a step up authentication when you go to the billing page. Uh, that's where we're gonna land on at the end here. So the first thing that we need to do uh, to kind of get that all up and running is we want to make sure that the user has a, a user profile scope, which is going to be different from just this profile scope. We're going to call it user, uh, user colon profile. We want to make sure that they have that scope before they're allowed to access this profile page. So in order to do that, we're going to jump back into Auth0. We're going to hit APIs and we're going to create a new API. Uh, an API within Auth0 is a representation uh, of your application or of an API. Um, and so we give it a name, we give it an identifier. So I'm going to call it uh, mywebsite.com. And it's important to note here, uh, you know, this doesn't have to match, you know, my actual website URL. Um, it just has to be a unique identifier uh, for my API within Auth0. So uh, I know that this is a little bit different from the actual URL I'm using, but that's fine. This is uh, somewhat arbitrary. And the signing algorithm can stay the same. So we'll click on create here. And once I've created my API, what I can then do is head over to the permissions tab and I can add the scopes or permissions that are available to users within my application. So I'm gonna add one called user profile. And if I have this permission or this scope, then I uh, can access the user profile page. 
I'm going to add uh, another permission called user billing. And if I have this one, uh, I can access the user billing page. So now Auth0 is aware of these two types of pages within my application um, represented by these two scopes. And now I'll actually be able to issue access tokens with these scopes, um, which include these in the scope list. So that's done. I've, I've created the, uh, the my website API within Auth0. So let's actually head back uh, into my application. And what I need to do to get started here is I need to tell my application to tell Auth0 to use this API. Uh, and to do that, I need to grab this identifier. So I've got my unique identifier here, HTTP mywebsite.com. And what I need to do is I need to add this as an audience um, within my uh, within my OpenID uh, Connect call. So, in order to do that, um, let's jump into the auth route or the auth controller. Um, and I know that I've just said a whole bunch of words there, so let me try and explain a little bit about what's going on here. So, the slash login path. Um, when I click on login in my application, this is uh, this is the controller that runs. Um, and what happens is we're basically just using Passport JS to authenticate. We're using the Auth0 strategy. And these are the scopes that we are requesting. So we're requesting OpenID, email, and profile. And in fact, we saw those scopes uh, are the list of scopes here in my extra param. And so what I need to do here is I need to specify that the audience, uh, my application audience is the API that I created in Auth0. So to do that, I'm going to say audience and I'm going to paste in uh, HTTP mywebsite.com. Uh, and let's actually just save that. Um, you can see my editors formatted that very nicely for me. Um, so now what we're saying is I want the audience um, to be mywebsite.com. And let's actually just restart the application and see what impact that has here when I reload the page. And just uh, watch this access token here. So let me refresh. And you can see that you know nothing has really changed apart from my access token. So previously, I had what's called an opaque access token. And that's where you know, the access token doesn't contain, it's just, uh, it's just an arbitrary string. And you have to go back and call Auth0 with that token to say, hey, what does this mean? Once I've added an audience, Auth0 is then able to issue a JWT as an access token. token. So if I go to jwt.io, um, this will allow us to just have a look at what is inside our access token. So we can see here in our access token that the issuer of my token is my Auth0 tenant, uh, which is API Days Singapore. Um, the sub, this is actually my user ID. And for the audience, um, one of the audiences in my access token is mywebsite.com. So what, um, what that tells me is uh, the audience is going through correctly. Um, and if we have a look at the scopes, then uh, we've still just got open ID, profile, and email. So now what we want to do is uh, we want to modify this page uh, to start requesting the user profile scope when I load this page. So I don't want to be able I shouldn't be able to load this profile page without the user profile scope. So I need to make a few changes. Um, and just a heads up here, this is uh, what we're about to do now is uh, definitely the, the most JavaScripty part of, um, is the most JavaScripty part of this workshop. So if you don't quite follow the syntax, uh, I apologize, um, but I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. So. Um, first thing I need to do is I'm going to go back into our controller and I'm now going to draw your attention to the secured uh, middleware here. So what's happening is when we load the user, the slash user endpoint, it's running this middleware here secured. And if that, you know, if the secured middleware says, yes, you're logged in, that's when it allows you to run the rest of the controller. 
if the secured middleware says, no, you're not logged in, it actually redirects you back to the login page. And I want to enhance this secured middleware. And I, I want to allow the secured middleware to check for a particular scope. So in here, I'm going to say uh, user profile, and I'm going to edit the secured middleware to basically take a scope. In this case, it's going to be uh, user profile uh, and for, you know, ensure that the user actually has this scope before we allow them uh, to load the rest of the user page. So I'm passing in user profile as a parameter there, and I'll go into the secured uh, function and I'm going to add it as a perimeter here. So we're going to say required scope. And let's just have a quick look at what this function does. So we say if we have a user, so this is, you know, if a user is logged in, then we allow the rest of the controller uh, to continue running. Otherwise, what we do is we set a session variable and we redirect off to the login page. Now I want to modify this to ensure that uh, the user that's logged in does actually have the scope that I require. So I'm just going to add an and here and I'm going to say request.user. Uh, dot, uh, let's just go back to our thing here. It's going to be dot extra params uh, and then dot scope. So dot extra params dot scope. And then scope is a space separated string. So let's do a split on, a, on an empty string. And then let's do an includes required scope. So save that. So now what we're saying is if the user is logged in and if the user has uh, the required scope, then we're allowed to continue. Otherwise, we need to redirect to the login page. And I just want to add that required scope to their session as well so that uh, we can request that properly. So I'm going to say required scope is equal to required scope. Okay, and we're good to go. So we've added the, re you know, in the event that they didn't have that scope already, we're going to add that scope to their session. And now we need to pick up that scope in our login controller so that we can go and request that from auth0. So let's go back to our auth.js. And I actually want to add the scope uh, here to, I'm going to add my required scope to the list of scopes that we request from Auth0. And the only, uh, the only tricky part here is that I don't have, just, just the way that this is set up right now, I don't actually have access to the user's session object in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this middleware in a function, uh, and that'll give me access. I, I'm actually not going to change anything initially. I'm, I'm just changing the syntax here. But this change in syntax will allow me to uh, to access the user's session. So to do that, I'm going to write a function here: request, response, and next. So this is just uh, the Express.js syntax. And uh, let me just put that there. And then I need to call this middleware with those three parameters. So for anyone who's not familiar with JavaScript, um, what I've just done there. That may look a little bit confusing and apologies, um, but I haven't changed any functionality. I've just sort of written a wrapper function and I'm calling the middleware from within my wrapper function. Uh, and the only reason I did that was so that I can actually access this request object in here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull out that required scope from my user's session. Uh, session dot required scope. All right. So now what's happening is every time we authenticate against Auth0, uh, if there is a scope in our session, if there's a required scope in our session, we're actually going to fetch that from Auth0. All right. Um, let's, and I'm just having a look at the questions here. It looks like, uh, it looks like we're all good. So let's actually, uh, let me just think. I think uh, we've done everything. So. We have changed our controller. We've required our scope. We've changed this login router. Um, let's actually see if that has worked or if I've forgotten something. So I'm going to restart my server. I'm going to refresh my oh, dot split dot include is not a function. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's jump back here into my secured thing. And I have a feeling that this is actually includes. I think I've just missed an S there. So let's just try that again. Excellent. 
loaded my user profile and you can now see that in the list of scopes, I have user profile. So by loading this profile page, um, it, it's actually gone back to Auth0 and said, hey, I need the user profile scope. So, so far, so good. Now what I want to do is I want to uh, add a billing page and then I want to request the billing scope when I load my billing page. Um, so this is actually fairly easy now. Um, I'll, I will say that the hard part Hard part is done. So I'm just going to take a copy of my user controller and I'm going to call this the billing controller. And I'm going to make this available on the billing route and I'm going to require the billing scope and I'm going to load the billing view and the title is going to be the billing page. So we've got our billing, ooh, and I'll say the get user billing in our comments as well. Um, so I've got my controller all set up. Now let's go and actually, I've also got my model set up. Let's go and just create a view for that as well. So let's copy the user view and let's call this the billing view. And uh, let's just delete some of this. So we don't need all that. We'll say this is uh, the billing page and I could probably just delete all this as well. So, and I'll just leave the profile there just so we can see what's going on. So I've got my billing page. Um, Two more things. So one more, I want to add a billing. Uh, I want to add a billing button to my um, to my menu at the top here. So I've got home profile logout. I want billing as well. So let's add a billing link in there. So that's going to go to slash billing, and uh, let's just get rid of the ID for now. Um, okay, that should be fine. I've got my billing, and the last thing I need to do is. Um, I've created my router, my billing router here, or my billing controller. Uh, but what I need to do is actually register this with my application. So to do that, I'm going to jump back into app.js and I'm going to include a billing router here. Billing. And billing. Uh, and then let me register that down here where I've got the rest of my controllers. So I've got my billing router. All right. We're good. So let me restart that. So what I did is I created a billing controller and I registered that with my application. I created a billing view um, and I just modified that to be a little bit different from the user view or the profile view. So now when I reload my page, we can now see I've got a profile page and I have a billing page. So I'm currently on the profile page and I have the user profile scope. And now I'm gonna click on billing and I now have a user billing scope as well. So all zero has issued me a different access token uh, with the user billing scope in it. All right. Now, next, next step. So we've actually completed, we've got a scope-based authorization model for our application. What that means is you know, every time I load a particular page within the application, we're going to Auth0 and we're saying, hey, can I have an access token with you know, these particular scopes? And now what we can do is we can use that um, to, uh, to basically implement step up authentication uh, within Auth0. So before we implement step up authentication, I actually just want to turn on MFA and then we're going to leverage that MFA implementation uh, for step up. So within the Auth0 dashboard, I'm going to head into multi-factor authentication out of the box. Uh, Auth0 provides a number of different options for multi-factor authentication. For today's session, I'm just going to use phone message. And so I'm just going to turn that on and that allows me to receive an OTP either via uh, a, a phone, or like a phone call uh, or a, via an SMS. Um, so I'm going to be using SMS for today. So I'm going to turn on MFA. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to trigger MFA via Auth0 rules. Um, so this kind of turns it on for my Auth0 tenant, but now I need a way to trigger it. So I'm going to click on rules within Auth0. Rules are custom snippets of JavaScript that you can run during the user's authentication. Um, so Auth0 is written, um, our, it's actually not our tagline anymore, but the Auth0 tagline used to be uh, written for developers by developers. Um, and to that end, you know, we have a number of uh, extensibility points within the platform where you can basically inject code, make 
you know, can change the default auth zero behavior, make it do what it, you know, the custom stuff that you need it to do. One of those extensibility points is rules, um, which are, as I said before, snippets of JavaScript. So I'm going to click on create rule, and this will actually take me to a, a template library of different rules, which we've already set up um, to start with. So for example, we can allow access to a particular application on, on weekends, uh, sorry, on weekdays only and deny access on weekends. Uh, we can go and call an external service such as full contact or Twitter and pull back additional user profile information during the authentication. We can go and uh, connect to a marketing platform or a CRM and, and create a lead in there. Uh, or one of the templates here um, is require MFA once per session. So I'm going to use this rule as my base. And what this rule does um, is, uh, so every rule to start off with uh, is given the user that's logging in, it's given some contextual information about the login and a callback. And, um, and what this rule is doing is it's basically inspecting the context and saying, hey, has this user already completed MFA or not in this session? Uh, and if the answer is yes, they have completed MFA, then we just call the callback without proceeding any further. If they haven't completed MFA, then we essentially tell the context, hey, we need this user to complete the MFA step, and then we call the callback. So that's uh, a very basic uh, form of MFA where it's just, it's essentially going to trigger every time I log in. And um, just to show that working, let's actually log out and log back in um, and, and see this MFA step. So I've already got my user just in here. Uh, and now because my user's never used MFA before, I actually need to enroll for MFA. So that's what, uh, what it's prompting. It's asking me for my mobile number so that I can enroll properly. So I'm going to say, uh, no, 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 my mobile number. And it sent me an SMS. And so it sent me six, eight, five, one, one, three. Uh, also, it then gives me a recovery code in case I lose my phone. Um, but what I've actually done now is I have both enrolled for MFA and I've passed that MFA step. So I was prompted for MFA when I logged in. Um, and now if I log out and log back in again, it's just going to prompt me for MFA again. So now what I want to do, I want to enhance that implementation of MFA and transform it into step up authentication. Um, and we've done the hard part. Like now this is just really easy. The hard part is done. So all I need to do is write an if statement here and we're good to go. So what I'm going to say is if uh, the, uh, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to inspect the scopes that are being requested from Auth0. So rules run uh, every time you request, you know, a new access token. And if I'm if I'm require if I'm requesting the billing scope, then I'm going to require MFA. That's going to allow me to do step up authentication um, when I load that billing page. So I'm going to say the context dot request. Uh, so I'm in, I'm inspecting the incoming request. Um, and then I want to inspect the scopes, whoops, scope. And again, scopes uh, are passed in as a space separated string of scopes. So I'm going to split them again on space and then it's includes and user billing. All right, so what I've got there is if my request, uh, if I'm requesting essentially the user billing scope, then I need to do MFA. But if I'm not requesting the user billing scope, uh, we call the callback without, without requiring MFA. And if I've done everything correctly, we should now have step up authentication. So let's log out, let's log back in again. And I should not be prompted this time for so this time I shouldn't be prompted for MFA upfront, right? Because I'm not requesting the user billing scope uh, in the initial authentication. So I click on login and ta-da, I'm able to log in uh, without passing that step up authentication or that MFA step. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the billing link that's going to request that scope from Altero. Uh, and then I'm then going to be prompted 
to step up. So I'm going to click billing and here we go. I've been prompted for step up. Uh, and now let's send me a code 771842. Uh, and you'll notice, you know, I didn't have to type my mobile number in again. That's because I've already uh, enrolled for MFA. So I simply just enter the code that was SMS to me and I have passed the step up authentication and I'm now able to access my billing page and I now have an access token which contains the user billing scope. Um, and in actual fact, that's it. I did it. Ta-da. Done. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to hang around uh, here just for another few minutes. And then uh, after that, I will go to the Auth0 booth, um, uh, the virtual booth in the partner village. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. Um, at the Auth0 booth, we are running a, um, we're running a competition there uh, and you can win, I believe it's a pair of Bose headphones. Um, so if you do want to head over to the booth, um, please feel free to do so. Um, I'll be there to answer any further uh, Q&A that anyone has. And, um, and yeah, I really appreciate everyone who's joined today and uh, I hope it was informative uh, and I hope it was uh, mild, at least mildly entertaining as well. So thank you very much. And I will head over to the booth now if anyone has questions. So I'll see you there.